After all these years of teaching uh, both the public and naturopathic medical students, um, and also teaching uh, all sorts of other medical professionals, there's something that I've learned over and over again, is that demonstrations are worth a thousand words, and then some. So I'm going to talk briefly about the concepts that I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to demonstrate one uh, hydrotherapy treatment, not simplest and not most complex. Hydrotherapy is a term that encompasses a hundred, at least, different styles of treatment. Hydrotherapy means treatment with water, but in many instances, not all, when we say hydrotherapy, what we're really saying is thermal therapy. And what we're saying there is we are using the application of hot and cold to the body in order to affect change. There are simple things we can do with that, and there are more complex things. In our naturopathic clinic, we can do many variations of fairly complex versions of hydrotherapy that we use heat, and we use cold, and we use water, and salts, and botanicals, and essential oils. We use exercise and massage all together as part of an overall protocol in order to change the health of the tissues, of the organs, and of the body. The major dynamic in many hydrotherapy treatments is using hot to create vasodilation, or dilation of the blood vessels, and cold to create vasoconstriction, or constriction of the blood vessels. This increase in blood flow and decrease in blood flow, when we repeat it in certain ways, creates a pumping action. And so we use this concept of hot to dilate and cold to constrict to pump blood through different parts of the body, sometimes systemically and sometimes locally. It's an incredibly simple idea that we use often to create changes that we're having a very difficult time creating otherwise. <clears throat> we do it for chronic disease and we do it for acute disease. The hot and cold business does many things. I won't go over all of them. But what I'm primarily concerned with is relaxing the muscles and increasing blood flow and to a small extent lymph flow in order to optimize the function of the cells and the tissues that I'm focusing on. Optimizing function through manipulating of blood because the bloodstream and the lymph and the interstitial fluid, all the fluids of the body, is absolutely required for the health of the cells. All of your stay-at-home cells that are sitting there that can't move around are utterly dependent on how much oxygen, nutrients, white blood cells, immune system, hormones, they are completely and utterly dependent on the delivery system to the cell. And they are also completely and utterly dependent on the waste removal system away from the cell. In either case, if you do not have optimum delivery of oxygen and nutrients and immune system elements and everything else, and you don't have optimal waste removal, then you do not have optimally functioning cells. Really simple stuff. What we're doing with hydrotherapy is we're taking this incredibly simple thing and using that knowledge and applying that knowledge to give us the absolute best chance of healing the body. Because it doesn't matter how brilliant the perfect supplements are that you put in your mouth, how gorgeous the diet is, if all that nutrition is not getting to the cells, then you don't have functioning tissues. And the other side that naturopaths are very concerned with is that if the waste products of metabolism and or drug residues and or environmental toxins are building up in that area around the tissues and are not removed, they've done all kinds of studies in labs and petri dishes to show that if you do not remove the waste, what you have slowly is an ever more dysfunctional cell. 
Too much carbon dioxide, very simply, creates dysfunction. And there's a point where too much dysfunction, of course, creates cell death. So what we're doing, in part, not entirely, is it actually gets more complicated, with this moving of blood is to create a situation in organs that need help to give them the best possible chance to heal themselves, which is a naturopathic principle. If you can possibly create a situation without risk of side effects or drugs, where the system, the body itself, can use its own resources to heal itself, then you have an ideal situation. You risk the least, and you maximize the potential positive outcomes. So, I like hydrotherapy. I especially like hydrotherapy because it's one of the things that I can teach my patients, and they can do on themselves, on their spouses, on their children, and they don't need me at all. Unless, of course, something goes wrong. So, in hydrotherapy, when we're manipulating hot and cold, please keep in mind that it should be to tolerance. Screaming is not indicated. <laughs> so, when we're going for hot or we're going for cold, we're going for comfortable hot and comfortable cold. If anyone has any disease condition or is on any medication that disrupts the ability to sense temperature change safely, and this is perhaps not a treatment to be done by them or by somebody else who cares for them. Do you see what I'm saying? So this is for somebody who has good proprioception and nervous system and pain reception and temperature reception so that they can accurately tell you that's comfortably warm or comfortably cold. <laughs> Screaming, not required. Fun, but not required. So uh, Ed here, who is a graduate of SCNM, is going to be my guinea pig. And we're going to show you a treatment, uh, let's see, the last time I showed, I actually didn't show this treatment, the last time I had somebody do it at home, uh, one of my patients is a surgeon, and she called me up on her way home, because uh, she's got a bunch of kids at home, and uh, the kids have been getting bronchitis, leading to pneumonia, leading to hospital visits, like every year. And she gave me a call and she said, it's starting again. How am I keeping these kids out of the hospital this time? And I said, this is what you're going to do on the way home. You're going to buy a roaster. Note, do you have Epsom salts? She said, yes, I have Epsom salts. Epsom salts. Do you have anything like Vicks or anything like that at home? She said, yes. This is a Gaia Kids Warming Chest Rub, which is really lovely because it's great for adults too. <laughs> And it's fairly gentle and essentially has essential oils and botanicals and this nice little base. And uh, it's uh, the natural version of like a Vicks chest rub. I like it a little bit better because it has a little bit more immune stimulating properties. Okay. Blankets. Turkey roaster. I think they're like 40 bucks at Walmart. It's fabulous. Now, you don't need a turkey roaster. Yes, you can use microwave hot towels, towels out of the, the sink, uh, you know, any, anything you can do to create hot towels. But basically, you don't need Epsom salts either. But if you're dealing with lung issues, chest issues, you know, colds going into the lungs, that kind of stuff, that's why I'm doing this, because we're all going into that season, and it gets really, really, really popular, colds, bronchitis, things like that. You take your towel, this is probably excessively big, and you soak it in Epsom salt warm water. So you just dissolve a bunch of Epsom salts in the warm water. The reason why I use Epsom salt is because it's magnesium sulfate. And magnesium dilates the bronchioles and the muscles and relaxes them better. And the sulfate has an anti-inflammatory reaction. So we've got the anti-inflammatory, we've got the dilation, we've got the muscle relaxing, we've got the bronchial dilation. It's fabulous. So, Again, you don't need the Epsom salts, but it really does make it better. Okay? How much salt do you use? Uh, it depends on how much water and how many towels you're using. <coughs> you want to have enough towels to create enough layers of warmth. I'll go through that. Um, and so, just enough Epsom salts to saturate the water so that you can get it in the towel. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, no. Uh, probably like at least a quarter cup. Oh. Somewhere between a quarter cup and a half cup, depending on how much water. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so. You make your Epsom salt hot water and you soak your towel. You 
you heat it up some way to keep it warm. Always have extra towels because, you know, what are you going to do? A little extra laundry? Have extra towels. That's my, that's my rule. Have extra towels. Have extra dry towels. Have extra blankets. Have extra towels. That's the plan. All right. Have your victim, <coughs> patient, friend, spouse, get into a comfortable position with their clothes off from the waist up. Uh, probably not in chairs. Okay, we're imagining this on a couch, on a bed, something like this. <laughs> Be nicer to them than I am then. All right. You apply the towels to tolerance. Okay. You want to make sure that it's going to be warm enough. Tell me it's too hot. And you put enough layers on so that you achieve approximately five minutes of hot. And she's telling me I got five minutes. All right. So we'll speed it up. Okay, five minutes to eight minutes. If they're really, really, really cold, you can go as long as 10 minutes. And what you're doing with all this, and your goal, is you want to relax the muscles, dilate the bronchioles, the lung fields, open everything up, relax. It tends to soothe coughing. If you have your vapor rub or something like that, you can put it on all over the chest first. <coughs> All right, imagine. All right. You put your vapor up over this. I was walking, walking my friend and patient through all of this over the phone. So she was figuring this out. It's not too complicated. You cover them up so they're nice and cozy. And you let all of the blood come to the chest area, to the surface of the skin. Turn them if they're a white boy, turn them pink. Okay, so they're warm, they're dilated, their diaphragms are relaxing, they got the vapor rub, they're breathing it in, it's anti-inflammatory, it's antimicrobial, it's relaxing, their blood is all coming to the surface of the skin. And then is the fun part. You have a cold towel. Now, Please keep in mind, when I say cold, I mean exactly how much cold they can tolerate. For a kid or for the elderly, it is cool. You got to wring out a thin piece of cloth that is not going to be too big for them. The cold is a stress. So you want to be gentle with your stress. If you got a big, strong, robust guy with a fever, you can slap a fairly decent cold towel on them. But if they are weak or they are frail, they are young, they are old, you're going to put a very, very, very gentle, cool, thin layer on. Does that make sense? Because the cold is a stress and you would just want to increase the blood flow, not shock them. Does that make sense? Okay. So, if you're being nice, you gently put after they've had five, eight minutes. If they've sucked out all the hot in five minutes before you do the cold, you might want to put another hot on. Why? Right before? Because we want all the blood on the surface of the skin. It's hot. <laughs> it's just hot. Okay. So I'm putting an extra one on. Tell me if it's too hot. <laughs> no burning the patient. It's a rule we have. So I'm doing this extra hot because, again, my goal right now is all the blood I can possibly get on the surface of this chest. I want it all there on the surface of his chest so when I put the cold towel on him, no, he doesn't scream. Good times, yes. Okay. 
Remember, only to the point where you think that they're going to heat this up, a piece of cake, and then I cover it up. You can have lots of blankets. You can have two blankets, three blankets, whatever it takes to make sure they're going to be comfy, cozy, tucked in. And your goal is to have this body heat up this cold towel or pillowcase or washcloth or whatever level it is that you need. You want in 10 minutes that body to heat up that cold. If they don't heat it up, you've applied too much cold. In which case you want to put a lot more hot towels in or put them into a hot shower, you over cold. So when in doubt, always aim for a not big challenge. Just a slight challenge is enough with the hot and then the cold to cause vasodilation, vasoconstriction, flood the lung fields with new blood. Remove from the lung fields the old blood, the venous blood, the lymphatic congestion that might be in there. More oxygen, more vital force, more immune system. Do you see what I'm saying? And the removal of the inflammatory and infectious waste products more effectively. You follow me? Okay? And then you can flip them over and do it to the back. To the front and to the back. The rules are don't burn them. Don't apply cold that's too wet, too cold, too thick towel. Err on the side of caution and just enough challenge, just enough, okay, to create a response. Vasodilation, vasoconstriction. And what the body's going to do if the cold is just cold enough but not too much is create more vasodilation again. The body rebounds and floods the area again with more blood. Make sense? Okay. This is an old time practice that the old MDs, mind you, in sanatoriums and in hospitals all through Europe, through Turkey and Greece, and then again in America for years, used hydrotherapy techniques like this one to treat tuberculosis, to treat flu and pneumonia and chronic illness, situations where the body was not responding optimally. And they use this along with other therapies to create optimal response. Yes? How many times is the hot cold cycle done? Once, twice, three times? It's usually done once in the front and once in the back. And that's usually enough to create enough blood flow throughout the system to gain speed healing. Especially if you use the, the warming chest rub and things like that, or things dilated, cough is calm, and things don't stagnate. Stagnation and infection and inflammation are a bad combination. And again, again, just again, the caution side is not too hot and not too cold. Yes? In this situation, with just like one or two rounds, probably not. Uh, unless you have somebody in acute renal failure, significant renal failure, this kind of treatment is unlikely to cause any real damage. But if you have any doubts at all, this of course is the kind of treatment that if you have a naturopathic physician, they can give you detailed directions specific for your case, uh, your spouse, your kid, something like that. Obviously, this a little bit of demonstration is just to give you an idea and not necessarily to tell you everything that one should know in every situation. Okay. You're stimulating the blood flow, Doctor. Is there any correlation to vascular disease? Uh, correlation? It, vascular diseases of different kinds could uh, be helped by this or hurt by this. Uh, I've got a patient uh, with uh, Wagner's, um, it, a vascular disease where there's a lot of damage to the vessels. And she's had that for many years, a chronic condition, and that has set up a whole bunch of complications throughout her body. And we use very, very, very gentle hydrotherapy uh, to increase her overall health. It's been the only thing that we've really uh, brought her kidneys back and her lungs back and her legs back because of it. In other words, she has very fragile, very inflammatory vessels, and we have used this very carefully, very slowly to increase her health. But again, any fragile patient, any fragile person, uh, this is something that should be done under the supervision of the physician uh, to be done correctly. 
the generally healthy, strong, young folk, you can mess up and you're not going to hurt them the best. But again, the very young, the very old, the very fragile, get more direction. Yes? Yes, but with a fever, you don't have to make them all that hot. The hotter they are to start off with, you just want enough blood to come to the surface of the skin so you can create this flush. Uh, great. Yes, I got a text saying I was the best doctor in the world. Uh, which I'm not, by the way, by any shape. But they, the, the, the message is, is that she was, in fact, a medicist. Like I said, she's in the medical field herself, she's a surgeon, but she could not believe that all these years she hadn't done something this old-fashioned and this effective. And so she thought it was the, the best thing 